Today we're going to look at Web of Science, which is a database that is uh, fairly popular and has a, an interesting and unique approach to doing research. Um, so like other databases, you can find it under the databases link on our homepage. And it's listed as a popular database um, here, Web of Science is, is where we're going. Now, um, if you're off campus, you'll be asked to sign in with your uh, Web Advisor username and password. So have that ready if you want to gain access uh, from off campus. Um, so this is the main page of uh, Web of Science. Um, like I say, it's an interesting database. It takes um, a pretty interesting approach to um, research. Uh, but there's some things that you should know about it um, before you start using it. Um, uh, first off, it's a citation index, so um, it's not a full text database. It doesn't contain the documents that you're finding. It only contains information about those documents. So um, that, that's what an index does, is it sort of indexes the uh, contents, but it, it doesn't necessarily provide um, the full text of those contents. So you're not going to see any direct you know, links to PDFs and things like that that exist within Web of Science. It's only information about those sources with links out to places where you may be able to find the full text of those. Um, and uh, often you can link through the library's other databases in order to um, link up with the, the resources there. So um, just keep that in mind that when you're searching this database, you're, it's not like JSTOR where you're finding um, you know, the full text of all of the documents that you're, that you're locating. Um, you're just finding out about the, the existence of those documents and from there um, your access will depend on uh, you know, what's available either freely online or uh, through our library subscriptions. Um, what is really interesting too about this database is that it's uh, centered around citations. So being a citation index, it's really kind of built up around um, citations and references and the sort of relationships and linkages between different sources, right? So there's a, a real highlight of, um, you know, who has cited whom and, you know, what sources exist in the bibliographies of the sources that you found and that kind of thing. So there's a lot of uh, ways to kind of explore the relationships between different sources within the literature, which makes it a very, very interesting uh, approach to research and a really powerful tool. Um, so looking at the, the uh, basic search page here, um, it's broken down into documents and researchers. I'm not going to dig too much into the researchers tab, uh, but I will point out that um, it's an, an interesting tool here you can use um, to search for particular researchers' names and get a full listing of uh, their publications. You can also search by organization. So um, you know, the authors will be presumably affiliated with uh, different institutions. And so you could uh, search for University of Winnipeg here. You get a nice big list of researchers at our institution, and you could see what kinds of things they're, they're publishing here. Um, so that's an approach that you can take. Um, most of the time, I think, you know, the reason that this is the landing page here on documents is that um, most people's uh, research process will be centered around searching by topic, uh, not necessarily searching by individual researchers. Um, but nonetheless, that's a feature that's available here, so that it's very cool, and you can check that out if you're interested. Um, but what we have under uh, documents is their uh, version of a basic search. What I love about Web of Science is that their basic search goes uh, pretty far beyond what you'll find in a lot of other databases' basic search. It looks much more like an advanced search that you would find other places. Um, so, you, you know, a lot of other databases kind of strip down their basic search to look more like Google, where you have kind of a search box and a search button, and that's about it. Um, Web of Science wants to encourage, I guess, a more kind of detailed and refined approach um, to searching, even if it's a basic search. Um, so here on this page, you have options for what field you'd like to search. It defaults to topic, but you can search within the title, author's name, publication and sources, abstract, um, you know, other places. So um, this is a, a really useful way to kind of refine your search from the outset. Um, you can also add um, rows to your search, right? So um, here we can combine terms with and, or, or not. Um, using this drop-down menu, you can add those um, search commands. 
and and you can uh, again choose you know what field you want to to search and enter your search terms there and i don't know if there's a limit to the number of rows that you can add um, but you can add a, a bunch of rows for, for different concepts that you're searching for um, so that's uh, you know really uh, useful as a way to sort of begin your research already from a more sophisticated kind of approach um, now if we click on advanced search it's going to take this even a, a step further um, where uh, it's actually called the advanced search query builder and so what this does is it gives you a, a lot of the same options but it's sort of a, a slightly different approach so um, here we have the same um, kind of uh, field uh, limits that we can put in and our, our search terms here but instead of searching for those terms immediately what we get is this box to add to query um, so for instance that you know I've been looking at serendipity in libraries um, this idea of sort of uh, happy accidents sort of stumbling upon um, good and useful information in the library kind of by accident um, so this is a, a, a concept or a topic that I'd like to add to my query um, and so I can put that in there I can click add to query and then you'll notice down here it adds it to my actual search query so it says TS equals serendipity so it's going to look for um, within the, the different fields of the, t the topic identifier um, it's going to look for the word serendipity um, now I can keep going with this I can add other things right so uh, for instance I'm specifically interested in serendipity in libraries um, so the occurrences of, of serendipity when people are using libraries for research either online or in the, the physical library space um, so I'll want to add this to my search um, now an important thing to note here is you have these and or not uh, commands it defaults to and and that's um, a pretty common way of approaching this you sort of build up um, different uh, search strings you know you want to you want to find the overlap of serendipity and libraries um, so that's how we would do it with with and um, but you can you can also build um, searches around the or operator so say you had a bunch of kind of interchangeable terms that you wanted to include um, you know, I, even here I could use, you know, libraries or archives, right, if I wanted to, to sort of expand on that a little bit to allow some alternatives. Um, but you have to choose whichever one you want, and then when you add to query, it adds it in here. So I have, you know, topic search, um, serendipity, and topic search library, or li library, libraries, librarian, librarianship, that kind of thing. Um, so this is how you can sort of build, like they call it a query builder because you're kind of building it piece by piece, right? And it also tells you what the field tags are here. So you can make adjustments, you can um, make sure that things are searching where you want. Um, you know, I could look for um, libraries specifically in the title or, um, you know, in the abstract, that kind of thing. So you can, you can really specify where you want to find the things that you're looking for and this is also the place here um, where you have your search history so I haven't searched anything yet so there's nothing here but as I do my various searches it's going to build up a list here you can clear the history if you've sort of gone far afield and you want to kind of reset um, but uh, mostly this every time you click search it'll just add it to this list here and so you can return to um, those searches and those search results really easily um, it will reset and when you close your session so uh, don't take for granted that it's going to save all of this it'll just disappear unless you um, take steps to save it so that's another thing to keep in mind um, so anyway, we've built this here. We, we could equally have done this search uh, using the basic search. Um, pretty easy to do this type of search uh, there as well. So it's up to you kind of how you prefer um, to approach this. This is how I've done it. Okay, so now I, you know, I execute my search. I got 113 results that match serendipity and library. Um, and so you can look at the results here. Now, as I mentioned, you know, some of these have full text links. So there's a link, you know, to the publisher where we can get access to this. Um, some have, you know, it's saying it's in, it was submitted to a repository. So you could actually access this through a local repository of one of these researchers. They um, submitted it to their institutional repository, and so it's available for free there. 
as well. Now, uh, some of them don't have anything, and uh, that's that was something I noticed yesterday, and I have to um, um, inquire about this because I, I believe there should be a link here that um, says find text at U Winnipeg, um, so that what you can do is actually automatically sort of link back through the library's other collections, full text collections, to see if we have this available. It's not showing up though now, so I'm not sure about that. Um, it might be there's some, maybe there's something weird with my browser. I am in an incognito window, so maybe that has something to do with it too. Um, but in any case, um, I believe when it's functioning properly, there'll be a link here that will actually allow you to link back through the library's collections to see if we have it. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, so we can try out some of these links just to see, um, you know, see that they are in fact working. Um, so this is, you know, uh, sending me through the publisher. So I'm jumping out of Web of Science now, um, and I'm at the University of Edinburgh Press. Um, and so here's the the full text listed right here. Uh, sometimes there'll be, uh, oh yeah, here's the option for. Uh, for the PDF file, we can actually open up the PDF directly in our in our uh, browser window. And so, once you're here, you could download this file to your computer. You could save it um, using a citation manager, any of those things. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for those links. And like I say, the find text at U Winnipeg uh, link that should be uh, present there. Um, those are going to be really helpful to actually get you to the full text of these documents. Um, and if there's something that uh, you find we don't have direct access to, um, that's a moment to request an interlibrary loan. And uh, using a tool like uh, Web of Science, it's very important to uh, get familiar and comfortable using interlibrary loan if you want to do like a comprehensive literature review. Um, you'll, you'll probably eventually need to request interlibrary loan. Um, you know, because you'll find uh, documents that you're interested in that just aren't available through any of our subscriptions. That's fine. We can usually locate uh, a lot of things, but you'll have to use the ILL service. So um, just keep that in mind. Okay, so as I said, um, there's uh, the, the interesting sort of angle that Web of Science takes is that it's centered around citations. So for each of these results, you'll notice over on the the uh, right hand side and um, there's uh, three links so there's one that's labeled as citations one that's labeled as references and then there's a link called related records um, so just to explain what each of these is and what they do uh, so citations is um, the number of sources that have cited this article right um, so after this article was published um, since then, there have been 18 other articles that use this as a reference or a citation uh, within their, their work. Um, so that, you know, shows a relationship sort of going into the future. Um, you know, researchers, since this was published, you know, 18 studies have sort of found that to be a useful source or pointed to that source as some indication of evidence of something or to, to support what they're writing. Um, so that, that's a really interesting one. Like I say, it's a link, so we can click it and actually open up a, a list of all of those sources. Right, so we can see this uh, listing of, of sources that had used that one from our search results. Um, then below that, there's the, the references. This is also a link, um, but in this case, these are the sources that were referenced by um, this article. So. Um, when the authors were writing this article, they made use of 22 sources, and those um, sources are uh, linked here. So again, you can click and sort of see uh, the list available. Um, I guess when there's no information available, it, uh, it doesn't include it. So some of them are included, but some they don't have any information in Web of Science about that source. Um, so that one's a little, little sort of incomplete, but... Uh, where were we? Um, and then the third link that we have here is related records. And um, this is interesting. It's not uh, super obvious exactly what makes something related. Um, but uh, what, I, what I can tell you is that uh, related records refers to uh, records that share references, 
with this source. So another source that uh, may or may not be included on one of these other lists, but another source that's also using um, some of the same sources as this one. Um, so it shares in their bibliographies, they share common sources is how it works. Um, so that's another link that you can, you can click. Um, this one has a little bit of extra information. So here for this one, um, it says there's 108 references in this source. And then just below it says three shared. So um, of the 22 and the, the 108 references of these two um, sources, they shared three. So there's they have three common, um, common sources. Um, and so you, I believe this is sorted by that number. So yeah, you can see the ones that have three uh, are up at the top. The more shared references there are, the more related it's seen as. Um, and then as you go down it, they become less and less related in the sense it's fewer shared references. So anyway, that's another um, interesting approach to this. Um, so using those is a really uh, an amazing way to kind of expand on your search. If you find, you know, one article that seems really, you know, highly relevant to your research, like this one, um, using these three different approaches, you know, maybe even searching within those results to see, you know, if there's um, some that mention certain terms or kind of focused on a certain subtopic, um, there's lots of ways that you can kind of continue to explore this. Um, so these are really valuable tools and a really, really great approach um, to research that, you know, at, at first this involves keyword searching, but um, ultimately what we're getting out of uh, Web of Science is a really strong sort of uh, relational approach to uh, research where we're seeing the relationships between different sources and, and kind of finding potential there. Um, and then, so another th uh, piece of this that's really valuable in Web of Science is um, also some analysis that you can do around not individual sources, but around your search. So here I've searched for serendipity in libraries, um, and there's a couple of options here. I can analyze um, the results, which will um, take us to uh, this sort of these different visualizations of um, where the results exist in the literature, right? So here um, we have this sort of block, or I guess they call it a tree map chart of different subject areas. Um, so in my um, results list there, um, almost half of them were listed as being part of information science or library science. So those are the results there, but there's also quite a few about computer science, um, you know, biochemistry, genetics. So there's other fields that, that are looking at this as well. Um, so that's a, a way, a sort of interesting way of seeing kind of how it breaks down by discipline. Um, and here is just kind of a listing of the same information. You can also change that. So it defaults to research areas, which is what we were looking at there. But you can also see, um, you know, other things like, for instance, authors here. So in my results, um, there's this one author, D. McKay, who has six results, right? Six records in, in my results set. Um, so that would be, you know, probably somebody if I wanted to look into like, who are the main researchers looking at serendipity in libraries, it could be that this D. McKay is a very important author um, in that field. And I can, I can say actually that, um, you know, looking at this list, there's quite a few names that I recognize um, from the, the preliminary searches and, and research that I've been doing on this topic. I can see it is, it is uh, sort of hitting on some of the authors that I've seen already. Um, so that works really well as well. So there's other ways that you can break it down too. You can get different visualizations based on um, different sort of fields uh, related to, to the database. Um, and then, then another thing you see next to analyze results is a citation report. This is very interesting as well. So clicking there, it shows you, you know, again, our 113 um, total publications that span from 1950 to uh, the current year. Um, within those results, there's, um, you know, the articles citing articles within my results set. Um, there's, you know, over 3,000, um, even without uh, self-citations, there's over 3,000 
um, citing articles, so things that have cited something in my results set. Um, and the number of times cited and the average time cited per item, so you can see sort of the, the importance, I guess, or like how, um, how kind of uh, far-reaching these are in terms of uh, being cited. So on average, uh, of in all of these 113 results, on average, they're being cited about 31.14 um, times per item. Um, you can also see here this kind of timeline. So um, the number of times it's cited, these bars are the number of publications in a given year, right? So you can see actually, um, you know, a growth in publications um, you know, 2021, the last complete year, there were 12 publications, the most in the sort of history, uh, the timeline of this topic. Um, and then you can also see this line here, this blue line shows um, the number of citations. Um, so um, you can see kind of how this topic has grown in importance, say, since what, 2011, 2012, it sort of picked up and that there seems to be interest uh, more interest than ever before in this uh, in this topic. Um, so yeah, and then there's you know individual um, sources and kind of the number of citations they received in each year um, to sort of see how um, things have changed in terms of their importance. Um, so anyway, lots of ways to kind of break this down and, and look at this uh, topic. You can also, uh, the third um, link next to the search is to create an alert. Um, in order to do that, you'll need to um, create or sign into a Web of Science account. Um, and uh, so I've done this in the past. Um, so I do have an account. I'm not going to go through the steps here, but um, when you have an account, you can uh, create alerts so that you get an email anytime a new publication shows up as a, a or would be a result of this search. Um, so that's a nice way to sort of monitor um, when new publications come out that are uh, relevant to your research. Um, so those were kind of the main things that I wanted to talk about Web of Science. Um, like I say, it's a really, really um, valuable and interesting collection that we have access to through the library. Um, the approach that it takes of kind of directing through citations and the, the linkages and relationships between citations is a really powerful way of exploring the literature and one that um, is not necessarily highlighted in other databases. So um, that, that's kind of a, a unique and, and uh, interesting thing that's uh, relevant to this tool. So hopefully that's helpful. As always, if you have questions about this or anything to do with the library, just uh, get in touch and we're really happy to help you out.